This is unacceptable, soldier. You hear me? Forgetting where they put their keys is the least of their problems. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie characters with memory loss. I don't want to dream any longer. For this list, we're taking a look at the most interesting or unique big screen characters who take forgetfulness to a whole new level. I've never even met you. Whether through a bump on the head. There was an accident or part of some complicated covert manipulation. Their inability to remember some pretty vital information concerning who they are or what they might have done. And how do you know I won't kill again? Leads to some pretty interesting viewing. And sorry, Notebook fans, but this means we're excluding slow, natural, degenerative conditions. Okay. It's all right. Okay. 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 Number 10, Henry Turner regarding Henry. I'm giving you why. Give me a break, will you? I just want a pack of cigarettes. Harrison Ford plays a scumbag lawyer who survives getting shot in the head during a robbery attempt. All right, wait a minute. Will you just wait a minute? He's shot in the chest as well. And the amount of trauma his body incurs leads to brain damage. Your husband suffered anoxia. It's a lack of oxygen to the brain. Henry pulls through, however, and when he wakes up, he's a changed man. Oh my goodness. Look who's awake. Hello, honey. No longer the scumbag lawyer with shady ethics, he attempts to reconnect with his family, namely his daughter and his wife. I want to go home. He has no recollection of the horrible man he used to be, which works out well for his loved ones, but not so much for his law firm. I can't be a lawyer anymore. Thank you, you've been really good to me. It's an emotional and thought-provoking role about second chances and realizing what's important in life. Whatever you want is fine. I want us to be a family for as long as we can, Sarah. Number nine, Lucy Whitmore, 50 First Dates. I'm Lucy. In this slapstick romantic comedy, Adam Sandler struggles to answer the question, does it count as the friend zone if she doesn't even remember who you are? I think he's more than my friend. You're my boyfriend, right? Yes, ma'am. He plays a womanizer who gets bitten by the love bug when he falls for Lucy. Love is a very loaded word. <laughs> Played by Drew Barrymore, she's a young woman whose short-term memory loss keeps her thinking that it's always October 13th, 2002. This is ridiculous. I'm not paying for this. It's October. While Sandler's character is completely smitten and will do anything to win her over, Lucy begins each new day with a clean slate. Good morning. <laughs> However, just because she can't remember him doesn't mean she doesn't eventually fall in love with Sandler's character, which makes her character and the film all the more sweet. I was so nervous to come here and meet the guy that makes me fall in love with him every day. I just added two more guys to my wolf pack. Number eight, the wolf pack, the hangover. Four of us wolves running around the desert together in Las Vegas. After a particularly wild night in Vegas, three men wake up in a trashed hotel room and discover one of their friends is missing. No, that's our missing friend. I don't give a fuck. Well, did you guys see him? What's worse is that none of them can recall what happened the previous evening. What the f happened last night? <sighs> The men had assembled to celebrate their friend's wedding, but ended up having one of the wildest nights of their lives. And now they've got to deal with a stolen police cruiser. There's your car, officers. A baby in their closet. Whose f baby is that? And a tiger in their bathroom. There is a tiger in the bathroom! The result is a hilarious and outrageous ride to recover the groom and their memories. They have found him! He's over here! They came out to have a good time, and, well, they did. I don't know what to say. Thanks for the bachelor party, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I just wish we could actually remember some of it. Number seven, Douglas Quaid or Carl Hauser, Total Recall. Douglas Quaid, I have an appointment. What's a guy to do when he wants to take a little vacation but doesn't have the time? He gets the memory of the vacation implanted instead. Ah, I get it, I'm dreaming. And all this is part of the delightful vacation your company has sold me. Unfortunately for this Total Recall hero, it turns out that all kinds of memories have been implanted and removed and manipulated in his head already, including the fact that he's a government agent. You paid to be a secret agent. 
bullshit. It's coincidence. As Douglas Quaid struggles with his dual identity and the people attempting to kill him because of it, he must also save an entire colony on Mars from certain death. Welcome to Mars, man! And it's Arnie's struggles to figure out what's real and what's just a false memory that make this much more than your average sci-fi action flick. I just had a terrible thought. What if this is a dream? Well then kiss me quick before you wake up. Number 6. Wolverine, the X-Men franchise. My name's Logan. He may not remember everything about how he got those adamantium claws. The only thing that'll take him down is an adamantium bullet. But he sure knows how to put them to good use. Part of what adds to this mutant's mystique is that the last 15 years of his life are a blank. Logan, it's been almost 15 years, hasn't it? Living from day to day. Wolverine's gruff, a loner, and an anti-hero. Hey, hey, it's me. Prove it. You're a dick. Meanwhile, his exceptional healing abilities kept him alive when his skeleton was fused with metal. Supposedly indestructible. It's been surgically grafted to his entire skeleton. In spite of the fact that he doesn't know too much about himself, this member of the X-Men still turns out to be a good guy. Those were good people back there. Innocent people. And that's just one of the many reasons we love him. Number 5. Samantha Kane or Charlene Elizabeth Baltimore, The Long Kiss Goodnight. My name is Samantha Kane. At least I think it is. In The Long Kiss Goodnight, Gina Davis plays a school teacher and mom with no memory of her dark past. Your memory was gone, you got confused, you bought your own cover. It was a fantasy for Christ's sake. Samantha Kane never existed. She knows something's not 100% legit with her life though, as she mysteriously washed ashore on a beach eight years ago. Eight years. <laughs> Except for my name, all traces are lost. So she hires a private investigator, played by Samuel L. Jackson, to dig into her background and figure out her identity. What is it? It's a setup. It's gotta be. Together, they discover that she was a highly skilled CIA assassin named Charlie Baltimore. Get the f out of here! <laughs> assassin! <laughs> whose last job was left unfinished. You failed to complete your mission electing instead to die of all things. It's an action-packed and thrilling journey that pales in comparison to Samantha Kane's previous life. Mommy! Run, Katie! Oh. 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 Number four, Joel Barish and Clementine Krushinsky, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Do I know you? Breakups can be really hard, especially if you're struggling to get over your ex. Ms. Krushinsky was not happy and she wanted to move on. We provide that possibility. Thankfully for the two characters in this romantic sci-fi fantasy, there's a solution to their endless heartache. They can have all their memories of each other erased. Joel, the eraser guys are coming here, so what if you take me somewhere else, somewhere where I don't belong, and we hide there till morning? It's a drastic move, though, and one that doesn't go over so easily, as Jim Carrey's character has a subconscious that's not ready to move on just yet. <laughs> this is sort of worked. I'm scared. <laughs> Why, Joel, don't cry, baby Joel. Clementine seems to have undergone the procedure without issue, but things aren't always what they seem. It might be the hair. And it's the pair's emotional and romantic journey that makes these characters so enthralling. I love you. Maybe in Wanda. Number three, Dr. Anthony Edwards or John Ballantyne, Spellbound. I have no memory. It's like looking into a mirror and seeing nothing but the mirror. An Alfred Hitchcock classic, this psychological thriller stars Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck as a pair of physicians looking to solve a murder slash identity mystery. And if we can unlock one tiny memory, it'll give us a key to the others. Peck plays a man who can't remember his true identity and has assumed that of a doctor named Anthony Edwards who believes that the real man with the same name has been killed. I remember now. Edwards is dead. Bergman is a psychoanalyst who doesn't believe he was responsible for Edwards' murder. And the two utilize methods of psychotherapy to uncover the truth. The human being very often doesn't want to know the truth about himself because he thinks it will make him sick. 
He's an amnesiac who dreams in Salvador Dali Technicolor, and those wacky dream sequences kept us all under their spell. I was sitting there playing cards with a man who had a beard. I was dealing to him, and I turned up a seven of clubs. He said, that makes 21, I win. But when he turned up his cards, they were blank. Number two, Jason Bourne, the Bourne franchise. I can't remember anything that happened before two weeks ago. An entire film franchise was built on the premise of a title character who couldn't remember who he was. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. None of it. And while Jason Bourne may have lost his memory, he still managed to retain some pretty lethal skills. <laughs> Playing the highly skilled CIA operative who doesn't remember he's a highly skilled CIA operative. I, I can't tell you. I can't. I don't remember. You John McCain alive. Thing. Matt Damon as Jason Bourne's training keeps him alive while he searches to uncover his identity. These people know who I am. I gotta, I gotta stay here, I gotta figure this out. This comes in very handy when he finds himself going up against multiple government agencies intent on killing him. I understand. And makes for a fast-paced and entertaining thriller all the way through. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Well, no, I can't remember any of it. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. <laughs> you don't remember that, really? Jim. Your name is Jim. I want to live a real life. I don't want to dream any longer. Number one, Leonard Shelby, Memento. Well, what's the last thing you remember? My wife. Back before camera phones could document our every move, Polaroids and body tattoos seemed like a good way to keep track of things. Sounds perfect. In this complex neo-noir from Christopher Nolan, Guy Pearce plays a guy trying to figure out who killed his wife. He killed my wife. He took away my memory. He destroyed my ability to live. His investigation is complicated by the fact that he has severe amnesia and can't seem to remember things for more than a few hours. I have no short-term memory. I know who I am, I know all about myself. I just, since my injury, I can't make new memories. His accuracy is only as good as the clues he's left himself, which isn't saying much. And that's what makes his character and Memento so intriguing. I have to believe that when my eyes are closed, the world's still here. Do you agree with our list? Who gives a shit what you believe? Who's your favorite movie character with memory loss? Don't listen Ooh. to Bill. He's completely out of his mind. He's probably still <laughs> drunk from last night. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Yeah, I see. Uh-huh. Okay.